Great. Hey everyone, welcome to CK AMAs. Today's guest intimately understands the grueling process of unlearning the old to begin learning the new. As a serial entrepreneur, he came to be a co-owner of a tutoring service for kids that were out of school for prolonged periods of time. To be ready to teach for a variety of different cases, as they could change day to day, he had to get great at a slew of subjects and subtopics through years of deliberate practice and acquiring mastery. After unsuccessful attempts at teaching himself how to code, he came across Career Karma and decided to enroll in Flatiron and landed a job as a software engineer in less than a year. However difficult the journey was, the hardest thing for him was to unlearn the past ways he was accustomed to learning and teaching to adopt new ones. From spending years giving and taking tests to being given a week to build something, he has proven that growth truly requires adopting to a constantly changing environment. Please turn your cameras on, unmute yourselves, and help me in welcoming one of Flatiron School's most recent graduates, fifth column's newest software engineer, and Career Karma's very own, Jason Lewis. Welcome, Jason. Oh, no. Hi, Jason. Hi, Jason. Welcome, Jason. Hey, welcome. Jason. Hey, everybody. Thanks for having me. Super glad yeah, to be here. Thank you so much for coming on. Super thank glad you so to be much. Here. Um, I'm I'm really inspired by your adaptability and hustle to really just get after it, like towards your own personal growth. I'd love to start with. Um, so at first you were skeptic. Um, what made you take the dive and believe that this whole boot camp thing would work out for you? Um, so I initially I initially I wasn't a skeptic. Um, I was self teaching, uh, self learning coding for a little while, and I. That's what led me to the boot camps. Um, I did a lot of research, as you all probably have done or are probably still doing. Um, and I kind of ended up at Flatiron um, because of uh, probably the fact that I can go in person. It was close. The timing and the schedule worked out pretty well. Um, but uh, I was you know, self-learning for a few years since about 2014. Um, did the HTML, CSS, as a lot of you probably have started to do or just finished. And I kind of hit a ceiling and I just couldn't figure out how to get my projects to actually work how I wanted them to work. So I said, hey, as a teacher and an educator, um, I understand the value of a curriculum, right? It's like laid out, the course structure is right there, is proven and it makes a lot of sense. So I decided to, uh, to go into Flatiron and then that's where, um, I didn't get skeptical at Flatiron at all. They had a money back guarantee, you know, all these incentives to go. And I didn't really go for those things. I went for more for, um, you know, the structure of learning. And uh, so that's how I got to, got to flat iron there. So I think that there was another really interesting point as well, where you were talking about how um, you were essentially like old enough to be like your TA's father in like a cohort full of younger kids. Could you talk about like how that kind of felt and like your thought process through the whole um, experience? Yeah. So, um, yeah. So as you guys can probably see, um, if your cameras are, 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 are close enough, I got some grays here in my beard. So I'm not a spring chicken. Um, and this is definitely a career move for me. But I think that was one of the challenges Melvin and I talked about a little bit before we got on was the fact that, um, you know, my, my brain isn't as plastic as some of my younger cohort mates. And, um, you know, uh, having to, uh, to go against the way I traditionally have learned um, in that very fast paced environment, um, you know, allowed me to kind of, uh, had to be very adaptable. But yeah, I was, I mean, there were TAs that were literally, you know, uh, young enough to, to, I was old enough to be their, their, their parent, I should say, I should say it that way. Um, but yeah, that was the kind of environment that I went into. Uh, and it was, it was really awesome to be around that young energy and just a young way of, of learning and, uh, and moving through, through the course. So it was, uh, it was very good. So how would you also say that um, Flatiron kind of prepared you for that job search? Because I know that you were talking about how they have this module six and it's a period of time where you're like, you're kind of grinding it out and making sure that you're job ready, but not necessarily job searching. Right, right. And I think that, yeah, that's where um, you were definitely right on when you said I was skeptical because I think that was the part where my skepticism 
kept it a little bit. Flatiron was awesome. The technical curriculum was awesome. Uh, the soft skills that I direct, that I um, acquired through the you know the technical parts also uh, were very important. You know, working with people, uh, peer coding, um, working on projects, those soft skills you actually develop right along with the technical skills. Uh, but in the module six, um, and if you guys don't know about Flatiron, if you're looking into Flatiron, um, when you go in person, there's five uh, five technical modules, and you kind of like three weeks a piece, and you just kind of move around through each module for three weeks. Um, and then when you actually leave the actual boot camp, the physical environment, there's a there's something called a module six or mod six for short, and that's where you're pretty much at home. You're not on campus anymore, but you start your career. Uh, your career coaching and your job readiness stuff. And that's where I was kind of skeptical when I was talking to uh, me and Melvin touch base a little earlier saying that, you know, they have this thing where they say, you know, do X, do Y, do Z. It's a proven formula. You know, this works for people. And in my mind, I'm like, this is not going to work for me. Right. Um, you know, it may work for other people, but I haven't tried it or, you know, I'm different, you know, um, I'm not special, but I'm different. It's not going to work for me. I'm a little bit older. I'm not the traditional student that this may have worked for. So I don't think this is gonna work for me, but um, this may sound super corny, but I need everybody here that's listening or watching in to really understand this. You have to buy into what these programs are telling you to do. It may, you may not see it. You may not understand it. It may seem over, it may be obvious, may seem obvious. It may seem totally off base. It may seem like it has nothing to do uh, with uh, anything that you've learned. It just may seem like you're spinning your wheels, but these proven techniques, um, they do work. They actually do work. Um, and again, I was skeptical. I didn't think it was gonna work for me, but uh, I def it definitely did, did work for me. That's great to hear. I want to um, just begin by opening it up to the audience that's with us live tonight. So if you all have any questions, be sure to drop them in the chat and also unmute yourselves. And if you could turn your cameras on so that Jason can make a face to a name, that would be really awesome. So now's the time to go ahead and start uh, asking your questions. Okay, Let's I'll go. Rose has them. Oh. Yeah, go for it, Stephanie. And then we'll okay. pick up Rose's right after. All right. Um, yeah, my Crenshaw shirt is just uh, coincidental, by the way. I, I didn't even think about it. Anyways, so I just graduated from Flatiron uh, last week. Congratulations. So, Congratulations, Stephanie. You. Wow. Congrats. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to that. <laughs> uh, so uh, right now I'm kind of going into that, uh, I guess the skepticism of like the, should I follow that curriculum or go to the Udemy stuff or look at all that because right now it's also like job searching during the virus and then you don't want to just like cold reach out to people because it's like sensitivity like however right. some people are really hiring and it's kind of like a ASAP thing um shout out to ASAP Rocky you know like you know it's like it's 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 a weird kind of situation so I guess like I guess what's your advice um, for like how you felt prepared after you did do mod six, um, and then, and then what is it like for you working and you know, with the whole like idea of like hiring and that right uh, now. Right. Um, so to be very honest, uh, I'll answer the second part of your question right up front. I mean, these are times that, you know, in my forty-four years, I, we've never, I've never lived in a time like this. So in terms of how you approach the job search situation now. And, you know, I know you probably feel like you're tone deaf or insensitive applying for jobs and stuff like that. So I can't really speak to that. Um, you know, I, I mean, I, I can't really speak to that, to be honest with you. Um, I think if people are hiring, you know, um, obviously they're still looking for people. So I would, me personally, I would probably lean more toward just applying for jobs that are, you know, continuously, continuously being posted or you know the newer posts, stuff like that, because just clear that those people are still um, in the hiring uh, phase. But I know part of mod six was you know uh, cold cold emailing and cold contacts, and I think it would you know I think if it's not something around acknowledging the, you know 
the coronavirus and making sure people are cool and then, you know, maybe just touching base. Um, I, you know, I think you're right on point about not going too deep into, you know, networking in that sense, because I think every, everybody's kind of at a standstill. Um, so with that said, mod six, I think one of the things I wish I had done coming out of mod five, going into mod six, uh, I, I think I wish I'd have taken a week off um, to really decompress. Um, my mod five was just the project the whole time, um, the whole three weeks. And um, I, I got right into the job readiness thing and I wish I had taken a week off um, between those times just to kind of let my brain breathe and process everything that I had learned for the past 15 weeks. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm sorry. Did I, I know I answered parts of your questions. Um, oh, you asked how is it working in the, in the field, huh? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's one thing that, you know, you might hear in the boot camps and I, I've seen a lot of uh, people talk about, um, you're never gonna be 100% ready. Um, the job that I got hired for, um, you know, I, I know React, I knew React, I knew JavaScript, I knew um, Rails, Ruby on Rails and stuff like that. Um, I got hired based on the projects and the code, uh, coding language that I knew to do React. Um, I mean, sorry, to do Angular. That was my first, that was one of my first projects at work. They knew I didn't know Angular, um, but they really look at uh, your capacity to learn, your zeal for learning, you know, how excited you are to really learn and just how much of a team player you are. I think that's one of the things that um, hiring my, my career coach talked about and a lot of people talk about, like, it's not about the languages you know, right? It's about your capacity to learn and to learn on the fly, which you clearly can do because you graduated Flatiron, right? And just how people are gonna wanna work with you every day. Um, that cannot be overstated. Um, I had a cultural interview for my interview for the job that I got. I had two, two interviews. Uh, one was a cultural interview where we didn't talk about anything technical really. Probably 20% of the conversation was technical and then I had another interview where it was like a code review where, where they reviewed my project and actually got into the, the code um, of it. But the cultural interview was first, right? So people wanna be around people that they like. People wanna to come to work with people that they like. And I know you've probably heard that before, but I'm in the field, that's a real thing. Like it's a very, very real thing. And I like, you know, I like my coworkers for the little bit of time that I was around them before, you know, everybody got kind of quarantined at home. But those are the things. They knew that I didn't know Angular, right? They knew that I didn't know that, but they hired me based on my capacity to learn and my excitement to learn. So um, that's that's really my advice. Um, so okay. uh, cool, thank you. No problem. And so Rosa asks in the chat, what's the best way to apply to cover my med software engineering role? Uh, What's the best way to apply to cover my meds software? Oh, oh. So I think that I think that she actually thinks Rosa. So this isn't Paul's um, AMA. I think that RB actually accidentally said yeah, the wrong name, of the wrong person. Oh, um, the cover my meds. Yeah, he's tomorrow. So definitely bring that question back up tomorrow. So we'll bring it to him. But <laughs> for the meantime. Um, did you have another question, Rosa? Yeah. Then who's the speaker? Like, are you working in software engineer and where? Yeah. Uh, yes, I'm a software engineer for a company, a cybersecurity company here in Chicago. And do you guys accept remote um, hiring? Um, so I'm just a junior there. Um, I just started about a month ago. Uh, they hired a bunch of new people, but with uh, the coronavirus thing, it's um, kind of kind of been paused. Um, I will have the option eventually to work remote, but uh, when I asked them that initially during the interview, um, I had to change locations. I came from New York, um, had to move it from New York. So they don't do remote uh, initially. Um, so you kind of got to come in and, and, and get to know the team and be assigned on projects and, and be assigned to lead uh, developer that we, you were, uh, would work under and stuff like that. So uh, that's a long answer to, uh, <laughs> to your question. How did you find your job? Uh, my job actually, so that's another thing during, during the uh, 
during the mod six, the, the job um, readiness thing, they tell you to, if you're ha if this is a new role for you, they tell you, look, tell everybody about your new role, right? Don't only contact the people who you think can hire you. Don't only contact the people who are in tech or IT or in related fields. They say, tell everybody, right? So tell your aunt, tell your grandma, tell your cousin that you hardly speak to, you know, tell everybody. And I told um, a friend who uh, lived in Chicago and um, she actually did a lot of, um, a lot of jobs. Uh, she did a lot of job searching for me um, or she's really just kind of put my role into Google and was helping me out with the job search. And she actually sent me the job that uh, I eventually got hired for. So, you know, when you graduate, when you become a software developer, like let everybody know, cause you'll be surprised who can mm -hmm. introduce you or give you a resource that leads to this, that leads to that. Um, it's probably 90% of the time won't come through the channels that you might expect. So definitely mm, be okay. about that. I'll be more vocal and let everyone know. Thank yeah. you. No problem. Yeah, so that's actually huge too. Um, I'll just add to that. Remember that you all have like very loose second connections as well. So maybe it's not like your aunt, but it's like your aunt's coworker, right? Or someone that is not even in your direct network. You have no idea like the type of ripple effect just by, you know, telling your story and letting people know what you're about and like what you're trying to accomplish. Um, no one can help you if they don't know um, what you want to get done. So make sure to always keep that in mind. And like I said, um, in previous events, that discussions is a really great way to just start practicing and sharpening that saw. And you always have like Twitter and other social media um, as well. So get your stories out there. Chris, did you have a, a question? It looks like your hand is raised. Yeah. Uh, one question. Uh, when you got hired at your company, I'm sorry for the feedback. Uh, did they help you relocate? Um, that was a part of my uh, part of my negotiation. So they did uh, they did help out a little bit with that. Do you have a follow up to that, Chris, or is that? No, it was just that was it. Okay, great. I had another question. Um, Go for it, Stephanie. All right, so what is your day-to-day uh, -day like? So you say you had to learn Angular. So, um, you know, kind of what else are you doing? What are you working on that you can talk to us about? You know, like, what, what is that like? Um, so you're, you're um, I'm learning, um, I learned Angular. Um, it took me a couple of weeks to kind of get the hang of it. Um, finished up a, a project with that. Um, then I got moved on to another project with uh, a couple of new, uh, new employees that came in. So I'm actually learning, uh, I'm learning Docker. Um, I'm learning, um, getting really familiar with MongoDB. I did a few pro side projects while I was in Mod 6, just playing around with the whole uh, node-based stack with the MERN stack and the mean stack. Um, but I'm really getting my, my hands dirty with Mongo. Um, we use we use everything from Python. We use Rails. We use uh, MongoDB. We use Redis. I've been learning Redis, um, and it's a very fluid environment. I mean, the boot camp couldn't have been more perfect and more correct in in terms of like you're gonna get thrown into some technology. Um, just take out the pieces that you need. You know, look at some models, look at some examples, look at some code bases. Because I'm literally learning stuff every day and I mean, it just sounds so cliche. I mean, I know it just sounds like, oh, that's what everybody says and it sounds so typical and cliche, but yeah, I mean, I'm literally, so my day to day, like today, we were, you know, pulling some Docker, a few Docker files together, me and a team, um, uh, we were working remotely and we were pulling some Docker files together that had a, a MongoDB um, database, um, you know, and it took us probably all day to figure it out you know, we're Googling stuff and looking at documentation, but it's, you know, it's, it's very fluid. It's very fluid. Did yeah, we have a um, question? Yeah, I was just going to say following up to that, um, which is like, so as you're learning the different ones, because in the boot camp, right, you have a, you have the curriculum, like you mentioned. So when it comes to learning React, it's like, here's a little bit of React. Sure, it's just a little bit, but it's a little bit of React. You have to look at the documentation, kind of fill in those gaps. 
um, but how do you, um, how are you going about learning the different um, languages, especially like something like Docker, where it's like something that's really, you know, hands on. So like, how are you going to, to, to really learn those things uh, in order to do the job um, without a curriculum in place to right. guide you? I get you. I get, and so fortunate for, fortunately for me, I am the type of person where um, I, I, I learn by example and then I kind of go to the theory. So, I mean, and it's no different. Like I go to YouTube videos, <laughs> I go to Google, like it's not, it's, you know, they don't expect you to come in there and be this like coding wizard, you know, just because you went to a boot camp where you have some training. Um, for Angular, I just, I literally bought, I, you know, I bought, I went on Udemy and I bought a course on Angular and I followed it and I kind of pattern matched and, you know, I said, okay, well, I know React. So how is, you know, how would I do this? In Re this is how I would do it in React. How do I pass down some props, right? Um, in Angular, how do I do that? You know, you know, how does that work? Um, it's a little bit more intimidating because you're actually working on a product. You know, you're working on a, it's not just a project, it's actually a product that, you know, this company is going to release. So it's a little bit more pressure, um, you know, mentally because of the context that you're working in, but your technique and the way you do things are no different. You know, I, like I said, I bought a, a course. Um, I looked online, I looked on uh, YouTube and watched some videos. And then for me, it was, it was cool because I had, you know, I knew what I wanted to do. You know, I knew what I was trying to do in terms of the app. So I needed, I know I needed a button here. I needed a modal here. I needed to pass this information down to show in the modal, right? So you're just passing props. So for me, the context made it a little bit more fun um, to, to figure out, but it's no different than research and stuff in, in the boot camp. You just don't have a curriculum, but there are a bunch of curriculums out there, right? It's just not going to be a flat iron curriculum. Okay, cool. Thanks. No problem. Good questions. Quick question. Hello? Yes, sir. Yes. So, um, so how many jobs did it take for you to finally land your first job? Um, when you say jobs, you mean like interviews like, I mean, from inter different places? Yeah, like, um, I mean, applications, I should say. Um, to be honest with you, I didn't even count. I mean, I, you know, you know how, you know how like in, if you're on LinkedIn or you're in different job platforms, you just blast, you know, your job pops up and you could do like quick apply or whatever. Um, so I was doing like a bunch of those, um, but I really focused more on um, networking on like LinkedIn, sending those messages to people. Um, if you guys haven't seen um, some of the, um, some of the stuff that Career Karma has on just networking, the networking uh, talks and stuff that uh, I think, uh, um, <laughs> I can't forget my man's name right now. Ruben's brother, he did a great one, one time that I was on before I got hired on how to, you know, cold, cold network. Um, so that's what I did a lot of, um, emailing people that I saw on LinkedIn. If I saw a job at a company, I would, uh, I wouldn't apply immediately. I would kind of try to see if I can see a hiring manager um, that I can find on LinkedIn. Um, and I would email them directly just to kind of talk about the job. Hey, you know, are you the lead for this job? You know, uh, or I saw this job, um, you know, what's the best way to apply? You know, just kind of developing relationships before I send an application. Um, you know, email, try to find another developer that works there. Um, ask them, you know, start asking them how, to, how it is to work there and how often do they hire or have you heard about them hiring? Um, so those different kind of indirect ways, uh, that was really the ways that I was applying for jobs. I did apply directly um, for jobs, but to, to tell you that I remember like how many jobs I applied to would kind of be a lie. But also I'm not saying that I applied to a thousand and I just can't count now. Um, it just wasn't really that many. So I just used a, a kind of diverse strategy um, where I, I can't really remember how many uh, how many jobs I applied to, but I would say that from the time I started uh, my job uh, my job start declaration date, um, I got hired in less than uh, I got hired in less than a month. So basically, when I really really started looking for jobs like diligently, I was hired in less than uh, in less than a month. I see. Is it in the Bay? Is your job in the Bay Area? No, I live in, I'm, I'm working in Chicago. I'm from New York, but oh, I'm working okay. in Chicago. Oh, okay. Hey, 
Jason. It's hey, Christy. Christy. Hey, so I got a quick question. Um, how is the, it different between how you use code when you were learning software engineering or just how you use code in software engineering and how you're applying it to the cybersecurity? Um, so I'm not really, so I'm actually learning more about the cybersecurity, the IT portion of it um, right now. Um, and it's funny because IT was something that I looked at a few years ago, took a few courses and just wasn't really a um, hundred thousand percent interested in. Um, but um, so, so to answer your question, I'm doing more of the user facing stuff. So I'm using code all the time, like the code that we write in the boot camp. So I'm like, I'm building dashboards for, you know, proprietary stuff where like some of our technicians will be looking at dashboards for certain information. So I'm basically building what you would be building in a boot camp. Um, it just has a different, um, just a different purpose. Um, so I am, I am pretty much coding every day. Thank did you. they have you? Did they have you do a coding challenge or any kind of like assessment? Well, I didn't have me do a, a new coding challenge, but what I had to do on my technical interview was uh, do a code review, and what that was was I brought up a couple of my projects that I had done in the boot camp. And um, the first part was me like, you know, just kind of going through the features, just basically walking you through what the website, you know, my project does, the website does. And then I had to do, I had to jump into the code. So like, you know, opened up the, you know, VS code or whatever, you know, whatever text editor and uh, just really went through the code, you know, um, you know, uh, and they were asking questions like, you know, why did you set up your database this way? Why did you use Rails versus, you know, uh, no, uh, you know, Mongo? So, you know, I had to kind of be versed with not only what I knew, which was Ruby on Rails, because all of my APIs for my projects were built in Rails, but I also had to look into um, MongoDB. I had to look into Node, the Node stuff. I had to know the difference between relational and non-relational databases. So they were kind of asking me questions about those different things, but it wasn't like a code review. It wasn't like a code challenge where they, you know, they wanted me to do, um, you know, algorithms or, or data structure based stuff. It was just really a code review of my own code that I had written. I'm also picking up on a couple of really good questions in the chat. Um, Lucas has this really good one. Um, and I think that everyone kind of has this question at one point or another, but what's one thing that you wish you knew before you started Flatiron? Hmm. One thing I wish I knew before I started Flatiron. Um, hmm. Well, Flatiron in particular. Um, so Flatiron in particular, if you're doing the full stack um, immersive course, two pieces of advice. Um, <clears throat> learn learn JavaScript, learn JavaScript, learn JavaScript, learn JavaScript. Um, and the second piece of advice is 1.5, which is learn JavaScript in the browser, right? So what does that mean? That means, you know, go into your browser, start pulling stuff off of the websites. You know, like if you go to, I don't know, New York Times or, you know, pull off the header, you know, from the console and just snatch the whole New York Times header off of the page, snatch an article off the page, snatch an image off the page, like make it disappear. Because when you get to a thing about like module three, I think it is at Flatiron, you're gonna be working with JavaScript, but you're gonna be working with it in the browser. Um, it's very different than writing, you know, typical functions in a, in a console somewhere where you're just getting, you know, your return value spit out to you and it's just out of context of a web page. And it's just kind of like, okay, you're running this machine, you're building these nice functions, right? Go to the browser, your, your get document by ID, your get, uh, you know, document dot query selector and all that kind of stuff. Work with JavaScript in the browser because I, from, I learned, I knew JavaScript going into um, to Flatiron. We started with Rails, oh, we started with Ruby, sorry. Then we got into Rails and then when we got to the module where we got into JavaScript, a lot of people were kind of iffy with JavaScript to begin with. They were great with R Ruby and that was their biggest, it was like they hit a brick wall. They just could not get JavaScript and then they couldn't get it in the browser. It was just like a culture shock. So 
make sure your JavaScript is on point. And when you make sure your JavaScript is on point in the console, or if you're using REPL IT or whatever, wherever you're playing around with it in, in Code Wars, or you're doing all these different uh, functions and stuff, make sure you get in the browser and start adding things to the browser with the JavaScript, um, taking things out of the browser with JavaScript. That's going to be a huge, huge uh, thing when you go to Flatiron. And it's, it's going to prepare you for a React, which is not very easy, uh, but it's, it's going to prepare you to make you appreciate React uh, if, you, if you can get that down pack. So that's probably the technical thing I wish I'd known before I started with Flatiron. Um, yeah. Um, that's probably about, probably it. All right. I think the other Jason had a question that he wanted to ask. Jason, you want to go for it? Jason? All right, we can move on to, uh, oh, I think he's up. Oh, sorry, man. <laughs> hey, y'all. Oh. Hey, Jason. This, my name's Jared, by the way. It's just that it comes up under Jason because of my email. I don't mind people calling uh, me. I don't mind. You can call me Jason. Actually, it's my grandfather used to call me that, so I answer by that name also. Cool. Interesting. Uh, cool. So, funny. That's a funny story a long time, but never mind. Uh, I'm interested in doing more remote because currently I actually help out my mom and dad and uh, day to day. And um, I was wondering... From your like your experience, good lord, I'm trying to ask the right question. I had it before this, but now I lost it. Uh, but um, when it comes to doing like a like, how would you recommend if someone's doing it self paced? What things would you recommend they do uh, to better prepare, better better prepare, but then also to better serve them when they're actually going through? The program. Sorry, I've got to turn my camera on. That's okay, um, so so are you are you are you currently in a boot camp or? Currently not in the boot camp. I I was looking at being accepted, but just I don't have the money right now. Gotcha. I'm gotcha. To build up the resources for it, but uh, I'm looking at okay. just like, hey, I'll figure. I can figure it out. I'm gonna try to talk to people on career crown still, and see if I can get something to boot camp. But at the same time. I'm just trying to be on uh, different apps or uh, doing different things on the computer constantly if I can to wow. just like get better and learn the basics. Cause I'm also in school currently and I'm about to leave that as soon as the semester finishes. Okay. Um, so what, what I would say was, is I would probably, um, and they might be mad at me just for saying this, but like I would probably download a boot camps curriculum. Mm -hmm. Right. And I would okay. just, that I would just literally right, reference it as I, as I study. So, you know, literally go through the curriculum. If they said, do this, and I would look up either Udemy stuff, YouTube stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, I, that's basically what I would do, to be honest with you. I would just look at a boot camp that you're interested, download the curriculum, and follow it um, step by step. And um, I would try to look and see if the timeline um, that the boot camp, um, you know, takes, my bootcamp yeah. is 15 weeks. So if I would, you know, if you could, I would probably try to pace myself right along, or, you know, right along the same amount of time it might take to go through the bootcamp. So to hold yourself a little bit more accountable to get a kind of a simulate, simulate the speed of the bootcamp that if you had, you know, if you would go. Um, but that's what I would, that's probably the best advice I would give you. Just download a curriculum and, and look for the resources online and match that and, and go for it. Okay. Also, um, uh, when it comes to soft skills, what is one of the things that helps you really develop that? I know you've actually, you've had years probably doing other different jobs before you came into doing this, so you got you're used to dealing with people. Right. But um, I've met a lot of people who've been on job twenty, thirty years doing a lot of different things, and they still lack people skills and just even the basic just like hey come on just I know you don't want to be here but just have just enjoy it a little bit try to be respectful try to just talk with every talk with anybody and just 
be cordial. You don't have to like everybody, but just be respectful to everybody. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's you know, I've I've I had um I had some projects that I worked with a couple of people that I wasn't um, totally in sync with. Um, yeah. To be honest with you, but I think it's the type of thing where you just have to be uh, number one, be self aware, right? Um, mm -hmm. Be self aware. Be be aware of how you're you're coming across. Um, be aware of um, you know how people are receiving you. Um, and I think part of being self-aware is being aware of how you're, you know, how you're being received again. Right. So, um, you know, I think that's the biggest part of it, understanding where you're at in proximity yeah. and, and, you know, and ideas and in a process with other people. Um, okay. the other thing I think is, you know, be, re be realistic about who you're dealing with in terms of strengths and weaknesses. Right. Um, you, you'll probably be working with people who you have a different skill set uh then or you're stronger in certain parts of the project right yeah and be self-aware um, about that also you know you may not like the person but if the person is better at something than you are uh, um, sorry you know, it dropped but no problem but kind of be uh conscious enough um and selfless enough to just let that person kind of run with it um mm -hmm. but i think soft skills is just more about just being self-aware and kind of being um, you know, kind of being considerate and just really keeping, you know, the, the goal in mind versus, you know, any kind of personal uh, feeling that you have about the person or the situation. So. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. No problem. Great questions. So it looks like we have Jamal and Chris that both have their hands up. Uh, let's go with Jamal first and then Chris will follow up right after with your question. First off, just thank you for doing this because you don't have to. You could be anywhere else in the world right now. So I appreciate you for being here. And then I know you only have familiarity with Flatiron, but what would you say is the main difference between a four-month program versus, say, like a 15-month program? Because if I could, it's like I'd want to, like, get it done as soon as possible or like a five-month versus like a 15. Um, cool. So no problem. I um, appreciate being here and helping you guys out. So um, I definitely thank you for, for, uh, for that. Um, but I'd rather be, I wouldn't rather be anywhere but here because I remember being on the other side and, uh, you know, it's very, very important to get information from people. So, um, but um, I think to answer that question, uh, I think it's really based on how you're wired. Um, I knew, I looked at, um, I looked at a, a bunch of schools. I looked at online schools. I know that I, ironically, I don't work well online. I knew that you know, I sit in front of a computer all day, but I knew I wouldn't be productive going to a boot camp online. I needed to be in person. I needed to go tap somebody on the shoulder and physically be like, what the heck is going on here? This is not working, right? So I can't, I just felt like I couldn't replicate that online. Um, additionally, I wanted to finish fast. Um, and I knew that I kind of, you know, I don't do really do well with things when it takes too long. Um, so I want to see results pretty fast. So I think that that's the main thing that I will focus on, how, how you're kind of wired to learn. Um, um, you know, outside of that, I think Flatiron wasn't perfect. I had a great time there. I learned a lot. Um, I would do it again, but I, don't, I just don't think you're going to find any boot camp that's perfect. Um, I initially, I didn't want to go to Flatiron because I didn't want to learn Ruby. I was like, Ruby is, you know, it's easy language. This is like, what is this? My first, my first Sony? Like, what is this? It's, this is like baby coding. I didn't want to learn that. Um, so I resisted it for a long time. And then I went and I learned it and I saw why they designed it that way. And I was like, okay. So I think that um, you're not going to find any perfect um, boot camp, but I think that they are extremely effective. And um, whatever one you go into, you know, definitely um, kind of give it your all. Um, uh, am I answering your question? I feel like I'm rambling a little bit. Okay, cool. Cool. So Luna also has a really great question. And hers is, what has been your biggest hurdle transitioning to a tech career and how did you overcome it? Um, my biggest hurdle. Um, oof. Well, um, that's a great question because I was in a boot camp for so long, it just feels like I'm continuing <laughs> doing what I was in the boot camp. 
So I don't really feel uh, as though uh, it's a big transition. I think I transitioned when I decided to go to the boot camp and then kind of getting in the flow of the boot camp helped me with that transition. Um, I moved to a new city, uh, so there was a lot of transitioning there. So it's hard for me to kind of differentiate. But to be very honest with you, I'm not the best one to answer this question because I, I honestly feel like when I, when I went to work in person, I work every day. But when I went into the office, um, it was like I literally felt like this is where I was supposed to be in terms of the career. It was almost kind of like I know some people that are at work and they like they'll go to YouTube when they're not supposed to, or they'll be online doing something they're not supposed to be doing. And for me, it was like, if I was at home, I'd be doing the same exact thing. <laughs> so um, I don't know, it's kind of it's kind of weird. So it wasn't really a, a hurdle for me. It was just, um, you know, it's, it's, it, was, it, was, it was like a surreal experience. That's exactly where I feel like I, I'm supposed to be. So um, sorry, I didn't answer that question very well. So Chris, do you want to go ahead and unmute yourself, ask your question, and then we'll move on to Sam. Yeah, just kind of uh, off topic. Uh, what's your favorite language to code in? Uh, I love JavaScript. I'm biased to JavaScript because it was the first functional language that I learned. So I'm biased. Um, yeah, I love, I love JavaScript, man. And what will be number two? Um, I like Python. I like what I saw from Python. Uh, I dabbled in that a little bit. Um, I like, I like Python also. Um, Ruby would probably be third. I didn't really like Ruby. <laughs> I love Rails, but I didn't really like Ruby. Uh, but what yeah. are you most experienced in? Uh, JavaScript. Okay. Thank you for answering. No problem. Thank you for your question, man. Sam, you want to go ahead? Hello? Can yeah, you can hear you. Um, well, my, basically, my I have a very short question. And when you got hired, uh, is that like the boot camp is a matter? Is that the question there? Because some of the friends that I have in the Bay Area, they work for, uh, they're Indians, and they work for Google, Facebook, some other companies. When I talked to them, they were like, man, you know, if you came from the boot camp, you will have a very like challenging, it's gonna be challenging, it's gonna be hard to get hired by the companies. So what do you think about that? Thank you. Well, I mean, I, it's, it's kinda, it kinda works two ways. Um, I think that an advantage, one, one advantage of being from a boot camp is that they know that you have like skills that are current that you can actually walk into a job and actually apply. Um, Flatiron, they, they, they kind of want to, they kind of steer you away from harping on the fact that you're in a boot camp. Um, they don't tell you to lie by any means. They don't ever tell you, oh, don't say you went to a boot camp. But they, they kind of advise you to kind of pivot when they mention some, uh, an employer or potential employer mentions a boot camp. They say, look, you know, they're, you know, when they try to, um, concentrate and focus on how new you are to show them what you can do. Right. So when they say, Hey, you know, so you went to a boot camp, say, but yeah, you know, I learned this new framework, Angular or whatever. I built this project. You want to see the project. So I think that for me personally, um, the, my employers, they knew I was from boot camp. They looked at my resume. I mean, it's clear it was on there and they actually saw that as a positive. They saw it as a positive because I had the skills that are, um, current in the industry, but they also knew that I was um, junior enough to learn and they could bring me in and kind of teach me the way that they did things um, at their particular company. Um, I think it's company by company. Um, and I think that, um, you know, again, I think that just use what you learn in the boot camp to show your value, right? I think that's how you deal with um, the question or the idea that you're not as prepared coming from a boot camp. Thank you. Thanks. You're welcome. All right. I think tomorrow has another question. So let's, tomorrow, you want to go and, uh, ahead and unmute yourself? Yes. Thank you. 
And thank you, Jason, again, for joining us tonight. We really appreciate it. Um, no so I am, I got accepted into a boot camp that has both the coding and the data analytics. Um, and I'm really nervous because there are so many languages um, that I'm going to learn in five months. But I also have to do a project at the end. And I'm just wondering, like, how did you choose your project? Or is it something that just came to you along the way? Well, when I was, uh, that's a very good question. When I, um, the thing that kind of pushed me toward coding when I was doing it on my own was um, the job I was working at. And I was like, look, you know, it has to be a better way to do what I'm doing. Like, it ha you know, we're doing the same thing over and over and over again. There has to be a way that I can automate these tasks. So I think, you know, what, what's, the, what's the saying of the, the mother of great inventions is a need or a problem solved. I'm, you know, I'm hacking that thing, but you kind of get where I'm, I'm going with, with that. Um, so that was the driving force for me, right? I needed to build something that would alleviate this pain of doing something repetitive. So that was um, one of my final projects um, that I did at the boot camp. Um, it was based around, um, in my previous business, we, I got a lot of emails that were in the same format and they were the same kind of information, right? It would be like the same thing, the student, the address, the subject. So I'm like, okay, let me just, I'll, you know, write some algorithms and stuff to really plug this stuff into. So that was my, that was my final project. Another project that I did was like, a, is super duper common, but I did like a Instagram clone, right? I mean, for me, it was like, I'm not really creative. I did the project that I was passionate about that led me to the boot camp. But Instagram, we all know how it works. We all know how it's supposed to function. Um, so it was kind of like, build that, right? You, you know what the bar is. You know, it should do this. It should be able to do that. It should be able to do that. Um, so that's, those are like, those are two of my, my many projects. Um, but definitely, again, it sounds cliche, but the best projects, the things you're going to be more passionate about, the things you're going to be driven to complete and add, you know, a lot of functionality to would be something that you're, you know, you're passionate about. Um, yeah, so that's how, you know, I kind of came up with my, my projects. I got a question if you got a second. Sure. Hey, what's up, Craig? Hey, man. Long time <laughs> listener, first time caller. How yeah, you right. <laughs> um, I know a lot of times I see people, my dog's drinking water, sorry. Um, I see a lot of times people come into Career Karma on the app and they have a lot of questions. They're, they're very involved. And then once they start a boot camp, it's like they just disappear. Like you don't see them for a long time. And I know it's because a lot of people get immersed in their school and they're busy and, um, if you had to do it over, what are some things that you would have tried to fit in to practice and learn during the whole process before you started, when you went to boot camp? things that you ended up needing later or thought you were important later, maybe for the job search or uh, final projects, things. Is there anything aside from what boot camp gives you that you think that could have been a good um, supplement while you were like some of you think, man, I should have been doing this earlier. Like, you know, like really hitting the algorithms hard or the mock interviews or is there anything if you could go back and tell yourself when it all started that would have made your life a little easier that you'd have known to practice on? Um, that's a very good question. You know, it's funny. One thing that I've kind of got hung up with outside of the boot camp was uh, HTML and CSS. <laughs> it sounds funny. I started with HTML and CSS got into JavaScript and was like, this is where the meat and bones is. And then you get into databases and stuff like that. And you're like, okay, you know, this is where the real work comes in and, and, you know, stuff like that. And then when I got back to doing front end stuff, you know, even at work, it's like, I'm, you know, I'm doing CSS. I'm doing a lot of bootstrap, a lot of material stuff. Um, but just, you know, the typical HTML, CSS stuff or more the CSS stuff, how to swing something to the left and swing something to the right. And, you know, those things were, were, I had to like, I was like, wait a minute, I knew this stuff back and forth. What the heck is going on? Um, so I think maintaining a balance between those different things. Um, algorithms, you know, it's, it's tough to answer that question because, you know, they tell you, you know, after the boot camp, you know, study algorithms and do your big O notation and time complexity and space complexity and, you know, all these different, uh, the trees and all that kind of stuff. Um, 
I never, I was never faced with those questions during the interview. I haven't implemented that stuff yet. Um, do I say to, you know, am I advising people to lean less on that kind of stuff? Um, absolutely not. Um, but you know, it's, it's just kind of hard to give advice from this side because of what I had to deal with and what I didn't have to deal with. Um, I think, uh, what I, what I would say though is, um, hack, I think, I think it's hack reactor. Their pre-course, um, is awesome. They have like, I think 300 like JavaScript or functional languages, kind of like code challenges where you have to do these different things. Um, they are incredible. It's not really algorithm driven, but it keeps you sharp, it keeps you very sharp. Um, yeah, but I mean, I honestly, I was overwhelmed with the boot camp, so I couldn't imagine kind of doing anything in between. Um, but probably, probably algorithms. I would look at that stuff in between. Like if you're traveling to the boot camp or on public transportation or something like that, or need a break, just look at that stuff. You know, look at that stuff early enough to where you won't be overwhelmed when you have to look at it um, toward the end. Um, Cause I got overwhelmed looking at that stuff to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, that would probably be, probably be the only advice I could probably give on that. Uh, Good question. to see you, Craig. Sorry. I'm sorry, sorry, guys. Go for it, Jordan. I think it was Jared was out trying to ask. Jared. Him. Yeah. He goes by oh. Jason and Batman and a couple other things. <laughs> Same guy. Yorn. Go I ahead, Jared. Where you at? Where you at? <laughs> okay. Um, what is uh, what do you use MongoDB for? Because I I've seen that around. That's other like that and R. Just like some I see in some of these languages, I'm like, okay, there's a whole bunch I'd like to learn, but then there's just some that I'm just like, come on, man, I can't learn. You can't learn all of these. So, well, what's Mon what's MongoDB's mainly used used for? If you don't mind me asking. Yeah, it's like a it's like a database language in the node, in the node world. So um, that's where you just establish your databases when you're doing um, your MERN stack or your mean stack. So when you're doing databases in Node, and it's a non-relational database. Um, but a lot of a lot of so that's what that that is. But a lot of that stuff is um, you don't have to you don't have to learn it all, right? You you just a lot of stuff is like even with the functional languages, like learn one language um, and I've heard it said, and before I, I experienced it, I didn't really uh, think it would be as easy as, as it is. But once you learn yeah. one thing, you'll, you'll learn the next one easier, right? So I learned Rails, and Rails is very, very structured. Relational database, very strict, had a high learning curve for me at least. But then I look yeah. at other databases like MongoDB, and I'm like, oh, you know, this is, this is just like this in Rails. Or, wow, I don't even have to do this, and I had to do this in Rails. So... Yeah. It just kind of makes everything easy, but don't try to learn everything. Don't get overwhelmed. Just learn, you know, learn, start off with like one stack, right? Learn, you know, if you're doing full stack, just learn, start, start off with one stack. And as you learn other stuff, it'll become easier. Don't try to learn everything. Okay. Cause right now, yeah, I'm in like HTML, CSS and JavaScript, but I also okay. want to learn Python from the, after that, after getting into those. And well, then if you're going to do, if you're going to do full stack, I would learn a full stack. Right, so HTML, CSS, you're doing JavaScript. So go and learn Express, go, go learn Mongo, DB, right? Just stay in one stack, right? Okay. And I would say, if you, if that's if you're gonna do full stack, but be very proficient in one language before you bounce around to other languages. Okay. That, that's something that you absolutely wanna do. I hear a lot of people say it before, and I didn't believe it. I, oh, I wanna learn Python. I wanna get one language down pat, and, and, and you'll be all right. All right. Thank you, Jason. No problem. All right. I think we have time for one more question. Um, I think. Hey, Jason. Okay. Joshua. Hey, Jason. How's it going? Hey, Joshua. How you doing, buddy? Good, good, good. Thank you, man, for for being here with us. No so, I, actually, I'm just, you know, I just got accepted into our Kenji Academy. Okay, so, good. Congratulations. Thank you. It's gonna be like a, like twelve twelve months, it's just like a year. So I'm I'm very you know I'm very nervous about it. Oh, 
the question that I'm going to have for you is just like, uh, because since you said like you did not do it online, right? Right. Yeah, actually, I'm going to have to do, to do my online. So the, that's the, actually, that's the scary part about it. So is it, uh, you know, like, is it difficult to learn uh, Python compared to Java script? Um, so, so let me be clear. I, I couldn't do it online and that's just based on my personal, you know, my personal style, right? Like, so I'm not saying online is bad or you should be scared doing it online. I know people that can take it online and they say, I don't want to go in any, I don't want to travel. I don't want to be in person. I don't want to be around people and online works perfectly for them. For me personally, it just, it wouldn't work for me. So I don't want you to be intimidated by going online. Um, because I, you know, I, I couldn't do it. You know, um, I think it would work fine for you if you're, if you're built like that. So I wouldn't no, be actually, scared. Of actually, the reason why I'm saying that is just like, uh, I just finished my master's in computer science. It's just oh. like, uh, you know, it's just like, I was, uh, you know, you know, I've always been in class. So the fact that it's going to be online, that's a little bit, you know, scary you know, for yeah. me. So, yeah, I understand. Um, so, sorry, what was the second part of your question? Um, no, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, so what's different is this Python is like, uh, it's, it's, it's more difficult to learn than JavaScript or, uh, um, I think, both? um, I think, uh, JavaScript, I like JavaScript because JavaScript is not a strongly typed language. Um, but you have to be syntactically sound right you can't if you miss a colon or well colons not anymore too much but if you miss a bracket you make a, miss a uh, um, you know parentheses or something like that it's not it's going to yell at you right so you have to be on point with um with with javascript python you just have to indent so it's a little it, it's a little bit more free form you have to be syntactically syntactically correct with it so you have to in, indent but after that it's not like it's a little bit more it seems a little bit more forgiving um they're very different in certain regards. They're pretty similar in certain regards. I wouldn't say it's easier. I wouldn't say Python is easier, but it's a little bit more forgiving in terms of the syntax. Okay, gotcha, thank you. But I'm not a Python expert either. So okay. I'm, better, I'm much better at JavaScript than Python, so. Okay, thank you. No problem, good luck, man. Congratulations uh, again. Thanks a lot. All right, Jason, thank you so much. Um, before I ask this last question to close us off, where can people find you? Uh, they can find me on LinkedIn. Um, I am Jason Ed, I think it's Jason Edward Lewis or Jason Ed Lewis, or if you, if you go I to LinkedIn and look for- I think I sent you a request today. <laughs> oh yeah, okay, cool, cool, cool. So I'm Jason Lewis, you could probably see me on there uh, on LinkedIn. Um, I think I have a Twitter. I'm not too active on that. Um, but LinkedIn probably be the best way to get, get me. Um, I'll actually look it up before we leave. Uh, yeah, and I'll be posting the YouTube recording on discussions as well with more information. Um, okay, perfect. So yeah, I can go ahead and do that. So yeah, to close this off, um, Jason, I like to ask a question just to get the audience to do something, right? even if it's one small action that they can take this week. So my question is, what is one thing people can do this week to move them closer towards their goal of breaking into tech? What would you have them do? Hmm. Wow. Um, that's a very, very good question. Depending on where, uh, where the person is at, um, I would say do that thing that you've been procrastinating on doing um, for a while. Um, I know that sounds very vague in general, but we're all quarantined. We're probably bored, stir crazy and stuff like that. But, um, you know, if you take that next step, if you've been doing HTML and CSS and you've been scared of JavaScript, jump into JavaScript. If you've been, you know, kind of nervous about reaching out to somebody, you know, do that one hard thing that you know what it is, right? It's been on your mind. It's been on your to-do list and you've probably been pushing it down or up depending on the direction, but like do that one hard thing, you know, do that one hard thing that's going to get you there. Sorry if that's not specific enough. I'm sorry if it sounds real general and vague, but 
Yes, that's what I, that's what I think you should do. No, that's great. And so for everyone here, I want you all to take action, right? Take Jason's advice. He shared so many valuable insights tonight. Take action. I want you all to go ahead and post that thing that you've been procrastinating on. And I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep a very close eye on all of you that are on this chat tonight. I want you all to post exactly what it is that you've been procrastinating on. Um, and then we're gonna follow up in a week or a couple of days. I'm gonna be tapping you guys, making sure that you know you guys are following through, holding each other accountable and everything. But like we said before, you have to let people know what you're all about so that they can help you get you to wherever it is that you wanna be. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to go ahead and be posting this recording on YouTube. Um, Jason, I'll be giving you the discussions link. And so now that um, you've been off of Career Karma for a while, we actually have built a whole like Reddit type of Quora thread where people can start posting and conversating with one another. It's no longer just limited to squads. Um, and so it should be really easy for you to jump into the comments. And um, I'll have that post right after this event um as soon as like the zoom recording is all uploaded and everything and so i want everyone to take action let us know what you're procrastinating on and then yeah i'll see you guys in the discussions let's jump in thanks man cool. Pleasure thank you being so with much you for for your time jason everyone help me in thanking jason for uh <laughs> spending some time with us tonight jason thank you so much thank you jason thank you jason. awesome, awesome. Thanks, my jason. pleasure appreciate it thank you for your questions guys Keep in touch, yeah, man. This is a great session. Thank you Definitely. so much. Nice Good to see you, Craig. Definitely. Uh, appreciate, appreciate you, Jason. Good Thank luck, you. buddy. You're welcome. Thanks. All right. And with that, let's break in. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thanks. Take care. Take care.